also, when you get your kit up into the position where you want to install it, first thing you do is grab your two ratchet straps for the bottom end and a come along. And we will go to our bottom anchor. In this case, it's a tree. Now I'm doubling up the ratchet strap, which just means you go around the tree twice and then you connect it to itself to make a loop. This will provide a good place to hook up your come along. When you find your base anchor for the bottom end of the unit, whether it's your return or your powered unit, you're going to make sure you pull out enough extra to cut off and use as a tether for the come along on the powered end. Then you're going to ratchet this to get, <clears throat> to get the tether strapped tight in the ratcheting section. And then you'll hook both S hooks together to make a continuous loop around the tree. Just like so. Now this is a standard two ton come along. It's got a couple little features on it that make it easy to use. The first feature you'll notice is this spring can slide back and forth, forward and back. And that releases this lever for ratcheting and for pulling out the, the cable. So you put it in the forward position like this and you'll be able to release the back of the ratcheting system with this lever. And while you're holding that lever, you can pull out the cable. And you want to extend the cable all the way out to start. All right, once you got your come along all the way open, you're going to take the loose end here and hook it in to the loop you made around the tree, like so. All right, once you've got a loop on the back of the powered unit, you'll just take the come along and hook it directly into it. Make sure your come along is fully extended with as much room as possible between the drive and the tree. When it comes time to unroll your rope, first thing you want to do is set up a caddy to make it easy on yourself. You'll take one of the shorter stanchions in your kit. There'll be three short ones and two long. Take one of the short ones, throw it through the spool like so. Take it too long for the downhill side, however you're oriented, and too short for the uphill side so that you keep the spool nice and level. And you'll pick the spool up and place it in the caddy. Next you'll unravel the plastic that's protecting the rope for shipment. You got your rope, you'll start unspooling it and walking up the hill. When you've got everything in position, now it's time to put the rope into the drive unit. And the first step you'll do is make sure you've cleared the rope from top to bottom so it's not twisted over itself and that you've organized it in such a way you know which end to pick up and which end to put on top. Now once you've got everything into position, you'll take a loop of rope and pass it through the guide bars like so. Flip your lid up and then you'll see here there are two quick releases. You just undo these quick releases without any tools and then you can pull the bolts out the bottom. Don't lose any of the washers. Should be two steel washers and one nylon washer, the lever and a little brass nut that goes in the middle. That's what you'll put in your pocket. And then a washer and a bolt on the top side for now. Now you've pulled your rope through. You simply have to take the axle and pillow block up off their mount, run the rope over it and put it right back down. If everything's lined up, those bolts will go right back in. And then, one at a time, you just reassemble the system the way you found it. Careful not to over-tighten. When you put Careful the quick release back in position, it just needs to be put the quick release back in the position. Now, once you're reassembled, you just look like that. Washer, nylon, and then another steel washer. And on the bottom side, you'll see the bolt head. And then, you'll take the rope and just place it in the V-notch. 
And this step is also important. When you take the axle and move it out of position, you will see that the belt might come off. Maybe you just spin it a little bit manually. Careful not to get your hands caught. It should realign itself. And make sure all the teeth are engaging as it goes around. Always check your belt alignment before starting up. Make sure your belt is riding fully on the gear. Looks like we're good here. And then your rope is passing all the way through the notch and don't start on a splice. Close your lid back up. It looks like that. All right, when you get up to the top, we'll separate the two halves of your return unit like that. Pass the rope in around them, and then you'll close them up. And then you'll attach three anchors in three different locations. The first anchor you'll attach is the one straight out the back. This holds the two halves of the return unit together. And then you'll just secure these down as deep and tight as they can go. And make sure that you have the nub on the end of the stake facing outward so it catches the strap. Next, you'll place two more in the same way, one on the left and one on the right, passing through this hole in the frame. You can hook the hook on the ratchet strap directly to the hole, or you can take a length of strap and just pass it through and go around the anchor. When you have all three anchors in place, you'll simply ratchet them until they are tight. Don't go over tight right now because the rope isn't tight. Just make sure they're all in tension and the return unit is facing directly towards the power unit. You'll place your e-stop gate in front of your return unit on the uphill rope. Make sure the e-stop gate goes in nice and level so it's not leaning downhill or leaning uphill. And make sure that it's placed with enough height so that when the rope goes tight, it's not dragging on the top of the e-stop. Then you'll take your long 5,500 foot extension and you'll plug that in You'll put a male on the end, or the female on the end of the extension at the top, and you'll connect to the male end of the e-stop gate. And then you'll take the blue 25 foot extension in your kit, and you'll plug the male end into the female end of the e-stop gate. So you'll have two extensions coming off your e-stop. And then you'll take the female end of your blue extension and plug it into your e-stop button. Make sure to clear the snow out of it. And then make sure your e-stop is released by twisting it clockwise. It'll pop up when you do so. So now we can start the system up. Once you have the top end anchored and the rope in both pulleys, make sure again on your walk down that none of the rope is twisted up. And if you're good to go, then it's time to start tightening your system. You don't want to over tighten it, so just be sure that you're keeping an eye on the rope when you do so. Remember to flip the spring on the come along, as I showed you before, to the other position for ratcheting it tight and then begin ratcheting. As you do so, guide the cable into the right position on the spool so that it doesn't get tangled. When you get to a point of tension, the powered unit will begin to move backwards towards your anchor. And this will tighten the whole system. When your rope is partially or completely in the air, then it's probably as tight as it needs to be. The next step is we will Apply stanchions to guide the downhill rope to its desired position. And then we will connect the e-stop circuit and we'll be ready to run. All right. Now that you have your system in tension, your top end e-stops are all secure. We're going to do the final connections. First thing you'll do is you'll clear off these motor plates. These mounts here are what the control box clips into. And then you'll clear this plug, make sure there's no snow and ice on there. Another thing is, make sure that plug's clear. You'll set this down just beyond the plug. And you'll notice these two clips underneath line up to mount on the motor plate. Those two clear plastic pieces will go under the motor plates and they'll slide into position as the plug inserts into the socket. Okay, lining the plug up and then simple as patting it into place. Now your control unit is mounted on. First thing you'll do is unplug the bottom plug, or open the bottom plug. 
take the e-stop extension that you wired up before. Same thing, clear it from snow. And you'll plug that in. This completes the e-stop circuit. This way, if um, anything cuts this cable, or if any of those plugs come undone, or if the e-stop button up top, or e-stop gate up top, get flipped, the whole thing will shut down. Next step is you'll twist this e-stop button on the control unit the same way you did the one on top and release it. Just like that. Then you'll go get your power cord. I'm gonna take this end. You'll see one end has an L kink in it and that goes on the top. You find that same L kink on the plug. Just line them up, press it in, and when it's engaged, you'll be able to twist it clockwise and it'll lock into place. So it locks right in and your power's in. The next step is to open the box. I'm going to close these breakers here and your unit should come on.